I just got a 3D printer. Probably unrelated. Um, I've never used a 3D printer before. This will probably go well. All right, I've printed some stuff. So my very first print, it's like a harp. <laughs> no, it's actually a raft, I'm pretty sure, to the file. So once I got the printer all set up, I did the bed leveling and all that and kind of figured out how to use the computer thing. Uh, the next thing is, of course, print something. So in order to print something, you go from like the 3D model to like an STL file, and then you load that STL file into a slicing program or a slicer, I don't know. Anyway, I've been using Cura and then you output that to the G-code. And then you load the G-code on to your 3D printer and print. Now, I had no idea how to do the slicing, so I was just like, okay, I'll just use whatever's on the printer. And they, they happened to have a dog G-code. So that started to print this, and I decided that's gonna be way too big. It's probably gonna take like five, six, seven plus hours. So, <laughs> so I was like, never mind. So I stopped the print, but still my first print. Now then, I went and found how to use a slicer. Super simple, you just drag and drop the STL, you pick some various settings, uh, and then you output the G-code. So this is the second thing I printed. I mean, just really beautiful. Um, <laughs> I guess the problem here, uh, like the printer just kinda, it, nothing stuck, and so that's the issue. Uh, what ended up happening is it just never stuck to the bed. Now, everybody uses different methods for getting things to adhere to the bed. Uh, in this case, this printer has a heated bed. So a heated bed plus printing on glass should work. Now, not everybody does that. Some people are still gonna have a heated bed glass and use something like a glue stick or put tape down. But from what I was finding online, uh, it looked like, no, you should be fine on glass. So I wanted to continue plus I mean, I did get this, right? So this did adhere. So I was just trying to figure out like what, what is wrong? Um, and this is what I believe to be a raft. So then I went back to the slicer, added a raft, and then I got finally this. So I was just trying to find something really small to test the printer, test things like this, where it's like, you know, uh, cause I wanted to be able to watch the entire print because you're trying to figure out what settings to pick. So your printer doesn't just end up in a huge mess. Right? And so, especially when you're starting out, you probably want to be able to watch the print the entire, almost the entire time, if not the entire time. Cause there's all kinds of stuff. Like as you get into the print, like at what point should you be setting up supports and all this kind of stuff. So anyways, um, print number three, great success. Okay, so here's a sped up version of me uh, designing this cup in Fusion 360. Unfortunately, Fusion 360, you can't see like the options and stuff that I'm picking. I, I don't know, this software is kind of funky. It just doesn't like to be recorded <laughs> for whatever reason. But uh, anyways, it, it was pretty impressive to me how quickly I could actually like model and make a cup because basically I just wrote down on paper kind of the dimensions that I wanted and then I just converted that right into Fusion 360. So. Super impressed with Fusion 360 as software is concerned. It's a pretty, there's so much to learn, but it's pretty intuitive of a program. So um, I definitely have a lot to learn. There was a tutorial I went through to learn at least the basics. And then I went to go make this cup and I was like, dude, I don't, I don't even, I, like, how do I make the cup? <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I got so much to learn. But slowly but surely figuring out how to do various things. Uh, and once again, the community is there and super, super helpful. So yeah, eventually I did get a cup, sent that bad boy to the printer and uh, got that done. All right, and uh, we have a cup that we created. So I'm gonna take off the bottom raft bit. Then this was the support. Then hopefully I can pop out the support here without destroying the other parts. It's hard because the piece that's supported is all, like pretty small. So I'm trying to pop out this other piece, but it's pretty well connected. I'm just trying not to break the other plastic. I mean, 
at least with the boat, everything was actually way more sturdy than I thought. Yeah, there we go. Um, but cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so now I have a nice small cup. Not sure I would recommend drinking out of it. I was thinking of using it for a coffee scoop. <laughs> cool. That's pretty cool to go from uh, something you designed to actually printing it. All right, so first few prints, pretty cool. I've learned so much since I got this printer. It's been really cool. There's been like so much information available online for this sort of thing. I mean, I, I can't imagine what it was like getting a 3D printer in the really, truly early days. Um, now, on to the topic of this cup. So my intention actually is was to use this as a coffee scoop. So this doesn't really matter, but when after I printed it, there's no way you'll see it on the video. But it just looked like the bottom layer was really thin. Like the thickness of the walls of the cup are actually, it's supposed to be, I can't remember if it was two or three millimeters, but there's supposed to be some thickness there. But for some reason, I just noticed that it's really thin. And sure enough, if I just put some like water in here, uh, it's really hard to tell but it's definitely like dripping from the bottom. And so you, I mean, I did intend for it to be a cup, even though being a coffee scoop, that does not matter. Um, I was kind of curious, like, wh like what went wrong? And to be honest with you, I, I don't really have the answer. So if I pull up the, um, the modeling here, this is the actual uh, model in uh, Fusion 360 and I mean I, I see the bottom exists right like it's definitely there and then when I push this model to Cura uh, here's that model and like it's pretty hard uh, to see you know in there but if you do uh, if we go to slice and I'll just slice it the same way I did before and we go preview and then I change this to x-ray view I still see that there's a base there. Like, like it clearly looks like it should have been there. And I'm just a little confused as to why it's not. <laughs> so if anybody has any idea on what is going on there, uh, feel free to share. I'm not sure if any, how many of my viewers have 3D printers, but anyway, that's kind of curious. I would want to figure that out. But overall, pretty excited. Um, I've made a lot more progress with doing 3D printing and modeling and stuff than I thought I would in such a short period of time. So that's pretty cool. Really super thankful that there's uh, such a huge community out there. I just didn't realize there's such a huge community for like every little thing you could possibly need or every issue you've come across. It's just like programming. Like the someone else has already experienced this. So, so it's pretty cool. So uh, moving forward, there's lots of things I definitely want to do. Um, one of the things I'd, I'd like to do is uh, get this thing called Octoprint. Oh, I think this is all goofy because I've got maybe the cat. Let me see if I minimize it. No, <laughs> that looks terrible. Let me fix this. I think that should do it, hopefully. Yeah, interesting. Fusion 360 is not nice to uh, OBS. Anyways, this thing called Octoprint, you put it on a Raspberry Pi and you can like manage, first of all, you can manage your uh, 3D printer remotely, but then also there's like, including the management, you've also got the ability basically, you know, send and receive files from it and then also just monitor it even with like a video feed. So I could put it, like I don't know if I really want to keep the printer in here, especially if I printed something like ABS, I probably want that in my workshop. So because you just don't want to inhale that stuff. The PLA is okay. I've read questionable studies about having that in your, like in a room. Um, but probably ideally it would go into the workshop. So um, I would really want to have something like this. So I'm not like running back and forth uh, doing that. But anyway, pretty cool. Maybe more stuff with 3D printing to come. I've got lots of, lots of stuff that I've, I've always wanted to be able to have a 3D printer for, but I just couldn't, um, couldn't do it because I didn't have a 3D printer. So now I've got one. Pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you want to see more content with 3D printing. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you later. And finally, a shout out to the people who make stuff like this possible, my channel members. So going on there, ninth month now, we've got Mr. Gene Jeans, Edward William Sams, Edward McCain, Thiago Lima, and Rodrigo Silva. Thank you guys very much for your support. If you didn't know, you can support the channel by clicking on that. Let's see if I can make it. Yep that beautiful blue join button right there <laughs> uh okay 
Till next time.